Hello and welcome to PTZ Optics Live. Happy Friday, guys. I hope that you're gearing up for a great weekend. And today we have a great show set up for you guys. We're going to be talking about live streaming school sports. And I just got back from a great school in the Bronx in New York City area that it took us through some of the things that they're doing to live stream sports. Yeah, we're going to share with you guys some tips and tricks for optimizing sports streaming with PTZ Optics cameras and some tips from the pros. All right, let's do it. So today we're talking about live streaming sports. I met with the SAR High School in the Bronx, New York, and they shared with us. I actually got to interview quite a few people there, so I'm really excited about sharing their thoughts on live streaming sports. One of the people that Paul got to spend some time with was their athletic director, Joseph DeCorda, and he's going to tell you exactly how they implement uh, PTZ Optics cameras in their sports streaming. Joseph was so excited about the way that coaches and schools are using the live streaming cameras and everything there that they actually, he actually had me sit down with coach Valerie Grislow as well. And she told me how she's sending the sports streams to students all over and uh, they're really using it a lot. So we'll talk to her as well. Yeah, definitely some good content there. We have some more content for you to access after the show. We have a free guide on sports streaming for schools. You can find that after the show at ptzoptics.com slash sports. And before we get started, I just wanted to mention if you're going to the NAB show, the largest live streaming broadcasting show in the country, possibly in the world, you can see us at Central Hall C3326. We can't wait to meet some of you guys there and to see some of you that we did see last year. If you are going to the show, make sure that you don't pay for a ticket. We have a free code until March 22nd. It's LV3384, so take advantage of that while there's still time. And finally, we have an awesome schedule of guests and people that we're going to be interviewing. Tess is going to go over that with you in just a moment. Yeah, we just got in the mail a poster that we are uh, going to be displaying so that um, onlookers can pass by and see exactly when and where we're going to be live each day. So a brief overview of who we do have on the schedule, not including some surprise segments that we're going to have following the main show time. On Monday, we've got Dr. Andrew Cross from New Tech. We've got Magewell. On Tuesday, we have vMix and then Jeff Adams. On Wednesday, we have Tom Sinclair of Eastern Shore Broadcasting and then X Keys. And finally, on Thursday, we're bringing in Black Magic Design and Mimo Live. So a lot of great interviews coming for you guys, as well as some hosting that we're going to be doing for other organizations and some partner and customer interviews. Can't wait. I'm going to head back this way. <laughs> so we're really excited about all of that. Plus, there are actually other demos as well. Other, there's a whole other hour. Yeah, there's hours. a whole other hour that we kind of decided to implement after our main show time. And that's where the partners and customers are going to be interviewed at. So stay tuned for more info on that. So quick little sneak preview. I've been working on something called the Accelerated Broadcast Club Curriculum. It's not out yet, but I've been working on it. And it's included a lot of interviews with schools that have broadcast clubs. And these broadcast clubs do anything from informing the whole school about school announcements to working very closely with sports teams. And so today we're going to be talking with the SAR High School Athletics Director and head coach of multiple teams. And they're going to tell us about what the live streaming video has done for them. Uh, they're they're going to talk about uh, recording the videos and looking at those that footage with students and athletes. They're going to talk about becoming more competitive as they're able to study the video and look at their competitors and see you know, the weaknesses and strengths of the, the teams that they're going to play again in the future and important uh, playoff games. And there's just so much to dig into. So I went out there and I met with them and we're going to roll this video really quickly to show you an interview about why it's so important for schools to start recording video at, at a minimum, but live streaming it to allow uh, other students, faculty, staff, and parents at home to watch these great sporting events. Doing a case study from the SAR Broadcast Club, who is having a profound impact on the school's sports teams. 
The Broadcast Club now live streams as many sporting events as they can using a PTZ Optics NDI camera located in their main gymnasium. The camera allows the Broadcast Club to remotely control the pan, tilt, and zoom locations using an IP joystick. Using the new tech NDI, the club is able to remotely manage everything, and the athletics director could not be happier. They use Wirecast to live stream and record all of their events, and the PTZ Optics NDI camera integrates directly over the Ethernet network in place at the high school. I had a chance to interview Joseph DeCorda, who is the athletics director at the SAR High School, who shared with me some of the insights about how coaches and students are using the live stream video recordings of their games. DeCorda asked me to sit down with Valerie Grislow, who is the SAR High School's head coach for multiple sports teams, to learn more about how coaches are reviewing the recorded video footage to improve athlete performance and gain a competitive edge against their competitors in the league. Let's take a look at how the broadcast club is helping their athletics department provide enhanced training opportunities for athletes and gain a competitive advantage by reviewing past recordings to analyze their opponents before a big game. All right, guys, here at the SAR High School, and I'm going to introduce you to Joseph DeCorda, the athletic director here at SAR High School, who has actually had a lot of success with the athletes and using the footage from an, kind of an analytical perspective. Absolutely. So tell me about your position here at the high school. So this is uh, my first year as the athletic director at SAR High School. Uh, so far, student athletes, faculty, everyone's been great. Um, it's something along the lines of athletics. We're looking to take it to the next program, uh, to the next level. And especially with the live streaming using technology that we do today, uh, coaches and the athletes uh, really do, do a great job using it. So I've been working with the broadcast club here at the SAR High School, and I really think it's amazing what they've been able to do. They've kind of taken it to a professional level. Tell me about the athletes here that are working in the different sports teams. Are they looking at the footage afterwards? Is it helping them to improve their game? Absolutely. There's plenty of times when a coach will come into a classroom anywhere and actually throw up live footage from the games, rewind it back and say, hey guys, look, check out the type of defense that they're playing. Any particular sport that we're live streaming, they can always dissect that film and really use it to our advantage. Wow. And I understand, so for the broadcast club, you guys have, I mean, how many sports teams do you guys have here? We have 27 teams. 27 teams. So the broadcast club can't get to every single game. Uh, what is that like? Are they able to kind of uh, prioritize on maybe the larger games? Because um, they obviously can't film every game, every practice. Mm -hmm. Right, so practices are tough, but for games, um, we try to c communicate with the coaches to get against those big rival schools mm -hmm. uh, amongst the Yeshiva League and try to really watch those big time games um, and know that those are probably the teams that we'll probably end up facing within later on in the, in the season, possibly playoffs. And again, really being able to look back at that footage is, yeah. is huge. Because uh, Josh was telling me, and of course Josh is the head of the broadcast club, that for specific teams to be able to go back and see the exact players and the exact team that they played earlier that season, then they're able to break down who's the key player, are they you know, strong on one side or the left mm -hmm. side. Have you been in, a, in any of those meetings where the coaches are breaking down some of the video analytics? Um, I haven't, but I know that there, are, there have been a few coaches that have used it. I know uh, our girls basketball, JV and Barca, are playing in the, a doubleheader championship game this Thursday, wow. so I know both coaches were already utilizing film. Um, yes, J. Lou does an amazing job with that broadcasting and even just live streaming. It, it, it really is huge, and I know um, Jeff Morris with the girls JV and Tali Zelvinitz from the girls varsity coaches. Um, absolutely, they try to take advantage as much as they can. Wow. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to kind of thank explain you. that. I think there's so many athletics. Uh, programs that maybe are going to be able to be benefit from this. Mm -hmm. And also broadcast clubs, I think, really need to consider their value to athletic teams because Absolutely. clearly... Now, here's one last question for you. I hear a lot about this. I'm not sure if you've heard any stories about this because it's your first year here. But a lot of um, students will actually potentially, maybe they're seniors, send the footage to a college scout to show them what they're able to do and then they're actually able to get scholarships sometimes. So I don't know if you've seen that before, but it's definitely a tip that you can give to some of the, the, the key players, the stars, and say, hey, you know, this footage can actually be sent to a college and perhaps assist in your ability to get a scholarship and you know, work with college scouts. Uh, correct. That's something that uh, a few of our students have done. I know one of my baseball guys, um, he actually had Jay Lou help him out um, with a few footages with him up at bat, taking some swings, mm -hmm. pitching, fielding, whatever it is uh, to you know, the specifics of your sport, 
Absolutely, it's a great way to send out a quick video to a college coach and say, hey coach, uh, you know, I've been accepted, I'm looking to be a part of the team. That's the first thing that they're going to look at because depending on where you're playing nationwide, um, it's, it, it'll be tough for that coach to come and take a look at your game, practice, yeah. whatnot. So it's a real, everywhere. real easy way just to send out a quick uh, footage of yourself and, and, and promote yourself, absolutely. Wow, well thank you so much for taking the time, Josh. Yes. I appreciate it. thank you. All right, everybody, I'm here with Valerie Grislow. She is the head coach for JV and Varsity yep. Volleyball. Yep. And Valerie was telling me a little bit how they use the broadcast club's video footage of the sports games to help improve the girls' volleyball um, you know, ability to kind of watch the game, see what they're doing. So what are you doing with that footage, and how is it helping the students? So that footage I usually send to my girls and break it down and like, I explain what I need them to watch out of the footage and it really helps me to help them understand what's going on in the game. So I'll break down, watch how the girl is moving to her right, next time we have to make sure we can go to the left, or the serving, if the serve goes into the net a bunch of times, how could you fix that by watching yourself in serve and in game-like scenarios. So it really helps me help them visualize everything throughout the game from what my standpoint is to what they're looking at. So you're able to, if I'm understanding you correctly, kind of take the footage that's been taken Correct. and you're actually sending it to the students and kind of providing notes and guidance. Yep. And so it's kind, of take, it's kind of like the flipped classroom, if you will, yes. the, the blended learning, where they can take these videos home yes. and kind of study them. Yep. And you're providing that guidance of additional notes mm -hmm. and from a coach's perspective. Does it also kind of extend the amount of uh, training that you can offer now because now they can kind of take the, this home yes. with them in a way? 100%. From when I used to play years ago, um, we never had footage of ourselves. So, you know, we would have to take footage, like I was also a softball player, so they would take footage of us swinging and then show us what we need to improve on. But like game mode and game experience, is so much more helpful for the kids because a lot of these kids are now visual learners and these will help them visualize what needs to actually happen by us like keep talking about it they need to actually see it and see themselves and see how the other teams are and put that all together so it's a great tool and it's and it's such a helpful guide it's almost like an, another assistant coach Wow. Now, so tell me this, because you, you, we talked about the students. So you're, you're, you're taking the footage, you're saying, hey, student A or, or athlete A. Yeah. Um, have you had any success stories of specifically being able to send them a piece of footage and then they actually said, oh, I didn't realize I was doing that? When they look at themselves kind of from a bird's eye view. Yeah. Because now they're not looking at, now they're not like first person. Now they're actually watching themselves. Has that helped in them kind of being able to take your input and then, and then go further with it? So yes, yeah, so what happened was I had one player, I would, we would compare. So I did a footage of her where her spikes were going into the net and compared it to a spikes that were actually going really full force and down being a direct kill, right? And then she would compare them and see like what she was doing right and wrong and put it together and it really helped her game, hmm. which also helped her with the other teams and her team too. It was a good, uh, it's like another team player too. Wow, so, so last question for you, I'm really interested in how you're looking at the, you said the sports games, right? So there's, yeah. a, there's an opponent team. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was talking to the broadcast club, they said that a lot of the, the school's sports teams will actually look at a game from previous yes. years. And then, so tell me about that. Are you breaking down specific players on the opponent's team when it becomes a, a big game? And yes. how does that go when your team is strategizing to play a specific opponent? So, is it, for different sports, it's many different ways. Basketball, it's how their defense is ran, what type of player could go a certain way with, you know, direction of dribbling, how do they, you know, crunch up the middle, is the outside open, that's for basketball. For softball, I break it down is how the pitcher is consistently throwing, um, where in the batter box I need my players to stand on when they're, when they're up at bat and how they were facing them in the last few games. Um, how their defense is set up in the outfield. So if I know that their defense is hugging the right, I'm going to make sure I'm going to move my player, you know, move their body direction where they hit it on the left side wow. and do that type of way. And that that's really helpful when I usually watch for softball footage. But wow. it really helps against other teams. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. No problem. Today, Anytime. Okay. And we're back. Thanks. Hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> So um, that 
that was a lot of fun. I took an Amtrak from Pennsylvania. Oh. You took an Amtrak from PA to New York. To New York. And took then from Penn Station, and I took the one train to the Bronx, and then I took an Uber to the Sar High School. You took so a subway, was, didn't you? Yeah, well, the, subway did the, the, the one, yeah. So yeah, fun. that was fun. So if you guys have any questions, let us know. We 